I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Storymakers. Today I'm with illustrator John Parra. Welcome John. Oh, thank you for having me. John and I have known each other for the last few years, ever since I won a piece of his artwork at a Chronicle book event. So I'm glad that we finally got you here on Storymakers. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yes, and your latest book is not typical of your other books because most of your other books have more of a Hispanic uh, theme to them, but your, your new book is? Marvelous Cornelius. And it's about, if it, it came out just a short while ago, and it marks the uh, 10th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, right? That is correct, yes. Yes, so uh, tell us a little bit about the, the story in the book. Well, the story is about a, a gentleman from New Orleans, real life person uh, named Cornelius Washington. Uh, who was a sanitation worker uh, in the city. He would also do like a lot of tricks when he was like um, <laughs> working on his job. He would pick up say garbage bags of, um, uh, on the streets and then just you know he would like maybe throw the, the bag behind his head or throw it over his shoulder through between the legs and then into the garbage uh, chute you know in the truck. So people, he'd almost like a performance artist. I, that's the word I'm looking for, a performance artist as, as a sanitation worker. Um, so he just, he, he just had this wonderful uh, character about it. And this illustration it gives us a real a feel for the uh, character Cornelius and, and it also has some little uh, rants, so what are those? <laughs> well basically he had a lot of call outs to when he was working with his crew, uh, his sanitation crew. So he'd call out to the driver and he'd have like great uh, things like woo woo woo, you know, that he would be able to call out. But I think his favorite one was the, the hooty hoo call out. So, yeah. But it would be like a really very passionate, you know, hootie hoo, you know. So he would he would just belt it out, and they and, and it all and it meant different things at different times. But I mean, those, these were sort of like his little uh, catchphrases, or his sort of like his 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 to his crew and his uh, the people that he worked for. Were there any uh, videos of uh, Cornelius? That there was. Yeah, yeah, there are a couple of videos that you can see actually online, uh, interviews with him. And so you had to. Um depict the uh, devastation of the hurricane. This, this, this represents a lot uh, about the book and in, in the storm in the sense that it was, it was a lot of personal items that were lost. I mean, like lives were lost. Anything that was related um, that, you, that you knew of in your world is gone. I mean, it's just gone. As I mentioned, I've known Phil for a number of years and he was your, you know, the, the, your author and you're the illustrator and just recently, for the first time, you met kind of coincidentally. That's great. And I was, I was there, <laughs> too. Well, we went, I was down, uh, I was invited for the uh, Princeton Book Festival uh, that happened, um, you know, just recently. And I was down there, you know, getting ready, signing books. And it, I think we were just getting started, my wife and I were there. And then all of a sudden, this, this, this person taps me on the shoulder and Phil, who um, we haven't met up until that point, um, although we emailed each other back and forth. So he came down, he needs to surprise me. Um, out of the blue. He, he didn't tell me he was coming. So that was really exciting. So we actually got to sit and talk and really just sort of kind of get into the whole story about, you know, everything about this book and, you know, where, you know, where he, some of his backstories mm -hmm. about it. Because he actually went down to, to New Orleans, part of the recovery effort. This is how the whole story began, was he went down there to help um, uh, volunteer right. with a group of students from New York and they drove a bus, which is actually included in the book because I like to hide little Easter right. egg characters uh, and things in the book. And so he actually went down and, and started this whole, um, uh, you know, helping, helping uh, all the people there and, and, and with the reconstruction. And then he was talking to everybody in the neighborhood, talking to people and learning about some of these stories. And one of the stories, obviously, that came out of it was about Cornelius Washington and, um, and, and his connection the with the neighborhood. It's, it's weird. It's like a weird feeling. It's almost like a, like going, like a high school reunion type of feel, except mm -hmm. you're meeting somebody for the first time that you've known for a long time. It's a very surreal but fun and, and, and wonderful sort of feeling when you get to, to meet up. The first time we met uh, was at SCBW and I had just won the uh, artwork I, and I saw your name tag and I pulled my phone out and, uh, and I showed you your artwork that I, know, I had just won. And, and I'm looking at you. I remember, I remember you crossing the room to come and greet, and, yes. uh, and greet me and I'm like, I was like, oh, this person is coming right at me. <laughs> right, so, yeah, so, yeah, so it's always fun to, because you kind of feel like you 
know, uh, you know, well, you especially feel like you know the uh, author because you, you have worked with their words. Yeah. And your first book? Uh, my first book was actually with Monica Brown. The title was called uh, My Name is Gabriella. I happen to have a copy here because that's what we do on Storymakers. Uh, and my name is? Gabriella. And it's about uh, Gabriela Mistral, who was a Nobel poet, uh, Nobel Prize winning poet from Chile. And it's about her life. So that was a... Uh... And then, uh, just moving along with some of your other books, we have, uh, well, uh, one is a shape book, which is? Round is a tortilla. Right. And then, uh, this, uh, th we have a shape book, and then uh, we have a color book right here. Green is a chili pepper. Which was uh, the first time you received uh, the Porta del Pre uh, Award. Well, the uh, second the, Puerto del Pre honor, uh, second time, yes. Oh, the second, the second time. The second time, yes. Oh, oh, and the first time uh, was for for gracias, thanks with that Mora. Our viewers may not be familiar with the Bel Pre Award. It is given by the uh, American Library Association, uh, and it recognizes uh, Hispanic uh, illustrators and authors. And uh, you have received uh, two of them. And yeah. most it's, so this was just uh, this year, right? Yes, yeah, this was this year. Right. Well, congratulations. Did you start out as an artist or illustrator? <laughs> uh, I think I gravitate more towards illustration, although I do do a lot of artwork um, as an artist. I mean, I have done a lot of gallery shows, so I've had shows here throughout the United States um, and even uh, abroad internationally. I have shows in Brazil and in other places. But um, in my heart, I believe uh, I'm an illustrator. I've been doing art all my life since I was a young kid. Mm -hmm. I studied art when, when I also went to college. Um, but illustrations seem to be where I fit the best. Was uh, one of your parents an artist? Uh, my father was an artist, uh, you know, amateur artist uh, growing up. Um, but he wasn't able to kind of like follow it as much because he didn't get to go to school as much. His family basically were migrant workers in California. But I definitely took some of the, his, uh, his, his love for art, um, you know, to, as part of my own. What high school did you graduate from? Um, I graduated from Thousand Oaks High School. Uh huh. And do they know how successful you are is the I, question. <laughs> if not, we are going to uh, contact Thousand well, you know, it's Oaks a, it, it's, and tell them to watch Story It's, it's Makers. interesting because I went to two, two high schools. I went to Bishop Diego High School in Santa Barbara and Thousand Oaks High School in Thousand Oaks. So there's like two different uh, groups that are kind of like, that know about my work. And, and, and they me. know about your work. Yeah, actually, uh, my, my, teach, my art teacher from Bishop High School, um, I still keep in touch with her. I send her books. Um, and who even, is that? Uh, that's Sandy Telson. Yeah. A good shout out to yeah, her. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yes. So she's, um, so hopefully, you know, she's watching. And, um, but yeah, I still keep in touch with her even today. Yes, you know, many uh, illustrators uh, mention their uh, high school art teachers who gave them the encouragement, you know, and, and their love for, uh, for art. So I'm glad you had one too. One of my favorite books, uh, Round the Sorti uh, Tortilla, is because I actually uh, own this piece of art. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, and if you ever need it on loan uh, for an exhibit, you know where to find it. Oh, I'll yes. remember that. You know, and you know, it's also interesting is that you actually, in your shape book, use a baseball field. Now, how did you come to do that? Well, I mean, it, it was in the text to do a baseball painting. And I was really super excited because my dad is a huge baseball fan. So it's like when I got the, when I got the project to do the book, I said I couldn't wait to do the, the project. So when I started working on it, I was really proud. You know, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to show my dad. He's going to be really proud. You know, his father, son being mm -hmm, proud and all right. that thing. Everything was pretty much finished. And I sent everything to the publisher. And then I showed him a, an advanced image of the baseball scene. And I'm saying, I can't wait for him. He's going to call me up. He said, John, I love the painting. I, this, is, this is all in my head. But um, he calls me up and he says, no, John, this is all wrong. <laughs> and I said, you, you, you got to fix this. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about, Dad? And he's like, he's like, no, you don't understand. It's like, you left one of the players out. You left the shortstop out uh, of the, <laughs> oh, on the baseball field. And you know, and you know what? Panic. I was just panicking. I couldn't believe it. He was right. I did leave uh, one of the players out of the, uh, out of the infield, the shortstop. So I actually had to call Chronicle Books up. I had to ask the painting back. I said, listen, you need to send me the painting back because I need to fix this right, right away. So I was actually on vacation in California. So they sent it to my, my mom's house in San Diego. And um, I worked on it there. And I, I finished it. I went out. I went to the art store, bought some paints and a brush, fixed it. 
sent it right back to Chronicle because they needed everything right away to start, you know, the whole process of scanning and, and, and everything like that. But I mean, it could have been, if I hadn't shown it to my dad, I don't know, would they have seen that this, you know, I can just imagine all these letters right. from kids, hey, you didn't put enough players out on the baseball, you know, on the field. So now he loves the painting, of course, and um, you know, now that it's correct. Uh, <laughs> and I see over there, you brought some uh, illustrations. Uh, tell us, what did you bring? <laughs> Well, these are some of the sketches I wanted to bring in uh, from one of my recent books, which is uh, Green as a Chili Pepper. Good choice. Uh, so this is basically some of the drawings that I, I use um, once it's finished, just before I go to paint. Mm -hmm. So based on these drawings, then I'll, I'll then move to the painting phase. But I just always think it's fun just to look at some of the sketches and drawings right. that you can see. Um, this one has to do with uh, some of the red chilies and red uh, ristas that uh, the mom is preparing in the kitchen. Um, let's see what the next one is. This one's kind of a fun one. This is more of a carnival theme, uh -huh. which was uh, a lot of different characters and people. And every, all these little characters are all doing something very, even though it's extremely small, <laughs> uh, I always wanted to make sure that all the little characters did something. Um, and when you look at the final painting, um, they're all very unique in, in, in what they're, and, and how they're having fun throughout the day. And, um, oh, okay. and it's just fun having all the rides and the Ferris wheel and things like this. Actually, you could have like a little index in the back of the book on pay. Find <laughs> the person that's doing it's X, a, Y, and Z. It's a little bit of a Where's Waldo kind a where's of a Waldo. Field, field, right, uh, right. feeling about it. So I always kind of enjoy all those little details. Um, and again, I, I, here, this, is a, this is a page that had to do um, with folklorico dancing. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like this page because it's just the kids, um, you know, it's like, Kids are so imaginative, and, and, and especially when they're like, you know, whether they're role, you know, like getting dressed up for Halloween or role playing. Mm -hmm. So this I actually imagined um, differently, you know, where the kids actually find this, these old clothes maybe in a, mm -hmm. in a chest or something like that. So they start dressing up. So it has to do with the dancing, but it's also about kids, you know, uh, uh, underlying themes about being, kids being creative, mm -hmm. you know, just sort of, you know, using their imagination to, to come up with this scene. So I kind of liked it, and plus it has the old gramophone record right. player and things like that, is, which I really like. So, um, and then of course, this is one of the prints um, from the book uh, that has the same scene. So oh, that's the oh, fully colored. That. Can we hold, uh, how about I'll hold this one, sure. and you hold this one up. Right. So this is, this is the sketch for this one here. And it goes like that. Amazing. And the, especially for green as a chili pepper, you had to be very specific with the colors because every page had to do with a different color. Yes. Uh, this one had to do with red. So yes. th there's strong themes about, um, for each page. So you had to plan it out very carefully. So what can we expect from John Parra in the future? Um, well, I just signed up to do three. Uh, New children's books. Uh, oh, can you give us a hint about them? Uh, it's okay if you can't. <laughs> well, I can, tell us, I can tell you the publishers. Okay. How's that? I'm doing one for Chronicle. I am do doing one for North South. Uh, North South. North okay. South. And one for Simon Schuster. Simon and Schuster. You're going to be all over. So yes. I'm going to be all over the place. Yeah, so. so when we go to all these conferences, you'll be just going from booth to booth. <laughs> uh, yeah. They'll probably hey, have me scheduled back to back to back right. to back. Right. Uh, just moving around. So if a person um, is interested in uh, owning a piece of uh, a John Parra artwork, uh, how would they go about that? Um, well, if they don't see it in a gallery show or exhibition that I have, then uh, there are a few pieces that I do list on my website, uh, select pieces, uh, mostly from the children's books. Great. If a person is a fan of a particular book, they could check your website to see if they can actually own one of the uh, illustrations. That is correct. Well, John, thanks for uh, being here with us, and good luck in the future. We set a goal. We want to see one of those gold medals on. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thank you very much, Rocco. Remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format.